Welcome back everyone, I'm Mike from 4.5 Tennis Mechanic 100% self-taught tennis player I learned from various YouTube tennis coaches to reach my current level But I realized there are way too many left out tips out there So here I am filling up those gaps for you So today I'm gonna show you the easiest and least stressful way to handle high ball specifically returning high ball on the rise i think most coaches over complicate this technique so i found another way to deal with this and i hope it works for you and if you play with a lot of junk ballers or moon ballers learning to hit on the rise will definitely give you an advantage over them it's actually okay if you want to wait for the high ball to bounce back lower for you to hit However, if the high ball lands at the baseline, you will find yourself lack of space to move back, not to mention you'll be vulnerable to drop shots. Either way, hitting on the rise is an intermediate progression. It's just a matter of time before you need to learn this. You might as well start working on this now, right? Is it possible to hit on the rise with power and spin? Well, yes, of course. But the focus on this episode is about returning the ball consistently to the other side of the court. Hence, we are not going to talk so much about power, alright? Once you get a hang of hitting on the rise, you can apply spin and power yourself. Though I must say at high level of sparring, I doubt you'll see a lot of high balls like this, but this is definitely something you need to know. For the sake of getting this technique right, my way, obviously, alright, let's talk about the one thing that you should not do. Don't try to trace the ball, and what I mean is you should not trace the ball as it flows from the top in the air to the floor it touches and then tracing it as it bounces up and trying to time it right to hit on the rise. Don't do that guys, it's going to be very very taxing for your mind. Keep it as simple as possible please. And first, you need to get into position. Make sure before you swing the racket, the ball is in front of you, you know, just like how you hit a forehand or a backhand ground stroke. Secondly, as the ball approaches you before hitting the ground, you have to choose a swing path. So, the idea is the same for both forehand and backhand. The tip here is very simple. Commit to a horizontal swing path. It's more mental than physical, it's more about adjusting the mindset as to how you approach the shot. And the swing path must be horizontal. Don't try to swing from low to high. Focus on the horizontal swing path. I know this might be new to most of you, but give this a shot, please. Be absolutely conscious when the ball touches the floor. Once the ball touches the floor, immediately apply the horizontal swing path. Commit to this trajectory. Do not try to trace the ball. I repeat, do not try to trace the ball, please. Play around with low, middle, and high horizontal swing path for forehand. As for your single-handed backhand, try low and mid-level horizontal swing path. It's not advisable to hit a high swing path for single-handed backhand because it's just really awkward. Focus on allowing your mind to absorb and adapt to this before trying anything funny, okay guys? And finally, to ensure the ball doesn't go long, Try to close your shot with a full swing so that you can close the racket face nicely to end the shot. Okay guys? I hear some of your requests to do full stroke tutorial but that's just not my niche. There are already many good videos for full stroke tutorial so I prefer to just focus on my own distinction. Hope you understand. A big thank you guys so much for helping me hit 500 subscribers. I'll continue to provide useful content. Feel free to drop a comment and chat. See you guys!